video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. Something nefarious has been unfolding in Rome for the past almost two years now, with few noticing. A group of good priests called the Canons of St. Peter's Basilica has been quietly crushed by Rome. Their organization still exists, the priests still offer the Mass, and they are still members of a group called the Canons of St. Peter's Basilica, but Rome has quietly put them under lock and key, and supervision, for political reasons. For a few years now, Rome has been trying to figure out where news leaks were coming from in Rome, and they think it's from this group of priests, evident by the actions they've taken against them. The measures the Vatican has taken to control them are frankly shocking, even for this group of modernists running the church who seem to have no end to their evil they do. There really are no limits to their wickedness, as we will see in a moment. Now, this is all happening against the backdrop of something the Vatican appears to be ignoring, a rising tide of those openly professing to be servants of Satan in the Western world. You would think that the Vatican would be concerned about this and would be finding ways to fight it, but no. The world now openly celebrates Satan, and it's only when normal people push back against it that the secular authorities lay off the praise of Satan even a little bit. To get an idea about what this rising tide of Satanism looks like in the Western world, let's check in with Rome, where we learn... Uh, late last week, a man decided to uh, remove all of his, the things he was wearing and jump onto the altar at St. Peter's Basilica. This is an act of desecration, and not the first that has happened in St. Peter's Basilica. Hello, Pacamama, we still remember you. His body was adorned with political slogans about the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe, and predictably, the slogans were written with a bent towards the side the secular authorities in the West want you to side with. The Italian news website, Celere Non Possum, blames Vatican mismanagement of the Basilica for this disturbing display being allowed to happen, saying that Cardinal Priest Mato Gambetti has promoted a lot of people in the Basilica, brought in a lot of new people to work there, but has done nothing to make the Basilica more secure. Well, that's not entirely true. Cardinal Gambetti is trying to make the Basilica more secure, but not secure in a good way. Not secure in a way that would have prevented something as absurd and evil and sad as this from happening. The Cardinal has installed a series of security cameras to spy on the canons of St. Peter, a group of priests who work for him. For what reason? Because of leaks to the Italian and international media. Remember how rumors have come from Rome on a whole host of topics, some of which didn't come true? We found out about Traditionus Custodis weeks, if not months, before it came out. But an example for some things that didn't come true were, for example, that Rome was going to formally send an apostolic delegation to the FSSP with the aim of harassing their seminarians or even suppressing the order. That didn't happen, or to appoint a vice pope who would automatically succeed Francis upon his retirement of passing away. That was a rumor. It didn't happen, even though people did report on it. Those stories came and went from solid sources in Rome, but weren't true because the Vatican has been leaking false information with the aim to find out where the leaks are so they can plug the leaks. This attempt to plug these leaks has now had one of Francis's servants spying on priests rather openly. In fact, bl blatantly openly. Now, this is made possible by Francis' reform of the Constitution of the Vatican, which, among other things, eliminated the labor office of the Vatican. Prior to this action, it was illegal to spy on employees in this matter, even priests. Employees had rights based on the church's claims about human dignity. Now that office is gone and the spying commences. The report comes from the Italian news site Silere Non Possum, and according to their reporting, the Vatican has been in the grip of many scandals that has caused Gambetti to try to cultivate good relationship with the Italian press in order to control the leaks. Remember, Gambetti's job is to manage St. Peter's Basilica, which to an outsider should mean that he oversees the day-to-day -day operations of one of the biggest, if not biggest, tourist spots in Rome, make sure the art collections are well-kept and presentable, make sure masses are offered when they're required, make sure employees show up to work, the finances of the basilica, along with all the other functions of the Basilica, which apparently now involves controlling the flow of information outside of Rome, if you can believe it. Those leaks I mentioned earlier must have come from St. Peter's Basilica and the staff of priests and seminarians who work there, given this weird activity. From the article, quote, If the Jubilee doesn't worry the Franciscan friar and the irascible Horus, one concern assails them, the, the spies. Every morning, fear hangs over the, these outgoing church clergymen, and when they type the name of the dreadful Vatican news site into the search engine, their fingers begin to sweat. Then a sigh. We're not being talked about today. Yes, what Mauro Gambetti and his team are afraid of is precisely the leak of news. 
they don't care that certain things need to change and shouldn't be done, but they do care that this news gets out. While therefore someone speaks of, quote, abuse, arguing that the church pursues the line of, quote, zero tolerance, within its institutions it places subjects who misuse their authority, threaten measures, and continue to bully. Precisely because of these scandals, which forced Mauro Gambetti to send numerous journalists up to the third floor of the Fabrica to, quote, cultivate friendships, today the technique has become different. Identifying spies. Although Orazio Pepe wanders around the various offices, claiming to be perfectly aware of whoever, quote, passes the news, and makes his mouth do gymnastics by threatening left and right, in reality, in the Fabrica, they don't know where to put their hands because they have combined so much, so many, that everyone has supported and maintains that, quote, we should be a minibus and we should make a minibus and send them home one by one, meaning they should empty the, the basilica every one person at a time till the leaks stop. The technique adopted, therefore, was to wallpaper the entire Fabrica di San Pietro with video surveillance cameras that immortalized, quote, the spies in the act of photographing the various pizzini that in the morning appear on the bulletin board signed by the Crooked Day Shift, end quote. But that's what they're doing to Basilica employees and the general priest staff of the Basilica. It gets worse because there are a group of priests called the Canons of St. Peter's Basilica. Now, you may have heard of this group of priests. They served the Basilica, offered the Mass of the Basilica, and made news in late 2021 when their offerings of the traditional Latin Mass were severely curtailed by the Order of Francis in the aftermath of Traditionus Custodis. Reportedly, you can still get the traditional Mass there now. It's offered in the basement. <laughs> the official news site of the Society of St. Pius X described that event in this way, quote, But since August 28th of 2021, it is the chapter itself that has been shaken up the Argentinian Pope having approved a series of standards that must come into force on October 1st for a period of one year, while the legal statutes of the chapter are revised. Under the pretext of reducing the chapter's expenses, its financial management is being placed under the tutelage of the Fabric of St. Peter, the office which manages the Vatican Basilica, which was restructured last March. From now on, the members of the chapter will each have their own function, either that of a canon proper in order to ensure, quote, the service of liturgical and pastoral animation of the basilica or that of coadjutor. The coadjutors, quote, will work on liturgical celebrations, pastoral works, and other tasks which may be entrusted to them by the archpriest together with the chapter. Pope Francis has also transferred a significant part of the economic activities of the chapter, the treasury museum and the sale of religious objects, to the management of the fabric of St. Peter. The chapter will continue to administer the few real estate and financial assets still under its management, knowing that a large part of its patrimony has already been transferred under the patrimony administration of the Apostolic See, the APSA. Finally, as planned, the reform of the chapter is accompanied by that of the liturgical agenda of the Basilica, because since the drastic limitation of private masses in the upper part of the Basilica last March, Cardinal Mauro Gambetti wants to go further. The new archpriest, animated by a, quote, Franciscan spirit, understood in the sense of impoverishment, of a general collapse and not in that of spiritual poverty, wants there to be only two con celebrations per day, in Italian, broadcast by the Vatican Communication Service, end quote. You ever notice how real estate and finances always find their way into these stories? Odd how that works out. The canons of St. Peter have been under scrutiny for some time, and it appears that the Vatican thinks all those juicy stories coming from Rome in the past few years originated from that group of traditional leading priests. Among their ranks is someone thought to be leaking information to the Western press, and they probably think it's one of the handful of Americans that are there, given Rome's hostility to the church in America. When looking up some details of the story, I found that back in 2013, one of Benedict's last acts was to name an American to there. You can do the research on that if yourself, though. But with news that they are spying on priests to prevent news leaks, it's no wonder if that the lady put up with this. The, the typical layperson who will never find out about this and generally supports Francis's efforts to, quote, reform the church, 
will put up with this, since all the data suggests that he has generally positive approval numbers from the laity, even if they tire of him and don't show up to his events anymore. They'll generally put up with this, because they probably aren't going to find out. Here I'm asking more of the money lady. Why are they putting up with it? The wealthy members of the lady, who want the church to actually act with decency and decorum. They're paying attention. Spying on priests is a bad look, and yet here we are with confirmed snooping on priests who work at the Basilica. Not because they are afraid that those priests might have a Ted McCarrick in their ranks. No, not for a reason like that, which actually might be understandable. But for reasons of church politics. Are you tired of this yet? Because I am. I am very weary of wicked men running the church in Rome, and there is no end in sight to the wicked things they do. For example, they're not merely spying on the canons of St. Peter's. The Vatican raided their quarters and very publicly installed the cameras so everyone could see what was happening. From the Saletti Non Possum article, quote, In recent days, Mauro Gambetti has had a flood of video cameras installed inside the corridors and entrances to the apartments of the canonical monsignors of St. Peter's, even inside the lifts. Basically, these priests are not free to meet whoever they want. They are not free to move. They are not free. That's it. While Pope Francis talks about innovation and modifies a penal law every day, he has not yet thought of issuing a norm regarding this matter, which is protected in all civil systems. Privacy. No, Juan Domingo Perón Dochet in this case too. Now one wonders, how is it possible that the government of Vatican City State allows all of this? How is it possible that the gendarmerie leaves in the hands of an institution all the video cameras that can be consulted for their own and non-judicial purposes? This is an unprecedented violation of the fundamental rights of these people. The ruinous management of Mauro Gambetti is now evidence. Every day in the Basilica, there are bishops and priests who complain about the impossibility of being able to celebrate, having to submit to the directives of a, quote, little beardless boy who sold tickets to the museum and is now the fact totem of the Franciscan father, lay people who continue to feel they are the masters of the entire Basilica. Giuseppe Grassi, who recently joined the Fabrica, is another of these, quote, faithful servants who does not enjoy great intelligence. <laughs> nice. <laughs> not long ago, he even sent a voice message in the chat to the custodians of the Museo del Tesoro threatening two people and calling them, quote, balls of expletive deleted. Expletive deleted by the original author, by the way. These are the men and women that Mauro Gambetti continues to bring into the Fabrica di San Pietro. In the meantime, confesses an archbishop, the Pope, quote, remains as a humble spectator in the Lord's vineyard, because if their subjects are busy making war on each other, they clearly don't care what the happens in their larger circle, end quote. Now, for a second, don't think for a second that Gambetti is doing this without Francis's orders to do so. But to be clear, priests are being spied on. Priests have had their assets seized by Rome. Priests have had their names smeared in the media for no good reason, and priests used by Rome in a divisive game of politics to ensure no resistance is possible to alleged reforms in Rome. Sound familiar? It should. This is right out of the secular playbook from South American regimes that Francis likes to decry, but in historic reality, took his political lessons from. Francis has made that much clear in his emulation of Perón, the, the famous strong man of Argentina, who Francis emulates here with tactics like this, because he did the same stuff. And yes, it is Francis doing this because there is no way a priest would be elevated to the office of cardinal priest by Francis and then do this on his own volition. It just isn't going to happen. Francis gave him that promotion for this purpose because for whatever reason, the Vatican thinks leaks to the Western press are coming from the Basilica. That's why the news from Rome has suddenly been slow. They've installed a fear-based Orwellian program to ensure these priests keep in line. It's profoundly un-Catholic, but that's where we are. But I'm curious what you think about this. Are you surprised that Francis acts like the strong man whose government he had a relationship w with during the dark days of the 1970s back in Argentina? Go read that book I keep recommending to you on Francis written by one of the, his sycophantic fans. You'll see it all there. Are you surprised that decent priests would be scrutinized and treated unfairly? Are you surprised at the prospect that tradition-leaning priests in the Vatican are thought to be at the center of the Vatican news leaks from the past year? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It certainly does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.